Grab a throne if that's helpful. Take a moment to again rock, sway. <clears throat> Let that move you towards some Sufi grinds, bringing it into the circles, inhaling forward. Exhale, round the back. Inhale, rock it forward. Exhale, rock it back. And then you'll reverse it, take a few in the other direction. Breathing in, breathing out. And then slowing down the Sufi grinds, ease your way back to Sukhasana. Leave in a shoulder roll or two from there. Maybe a horse breath or two, sighing it all out, fluttering the lips out, whatever you need. Fingertips down to the ground, switch the crossing. Give yourself that extra moment just to check in. Do you overarch in the low back, the neck? Maybe even start with some peace fingers here, one of those shoulder rolls. And then bring in your Sufi grinds, starting the way you often don't. If you're not sure, nor am I all the time, right? Making sure that we play with it a little bit not attaching to any sort of perfection, but finding a little more fluidity where there might be tension, soreness, stress. And this idea of integrating breath and movement, maybe reversing direction more than once if that's a good idea right now. <clears throat> And then that can move to just some rocks and sways. It could evolve to some easy cat-cow shapes, the seated variety. Or again, a shoulder roll, some piece finger work to help align the spine. Finishing up with any extra stretching, yawning, even getting the fidgets out if that's what's helpful. Breathing in, stretch your arms toward the sky when you're right. Breathing out, simply hug the belly toward the spine, feeling that support. And breathing in, root through the sit bones, reach up. And as you breathe out, just hug the navel in and gently up. One more inhale. Exhale, integrating all sides physically, bring the hands together. Take another moment, that breath, too, with hands in the prayer, inspired shape, Anjali Mudra. Maybe shrug, release, again, stretch, yawn, do what you got to do. That includes setting a specific intention. I was about to say on this Monday afternoon, but it could be a Tuesday morning. It's almost always a good time to refocus, to reground in the here and now. Take another moment to do so and let that be a practice you revisit again and again, on and off the mat. You can push forward or swing legs around. Couple of breaths, getting into a table shape where you're high on your fingertips. Spider fingers, tops of the feet or bottoms of the feet can root at any point. That threading of the needle in the mid upper back. So you're gonna inhale and reach up to the right. At first, you're just sliding the arm underneath you, creating that fluidity where there might be a lot of soreness, lactic acid, scar tissue. Reaching wide, do take a deep breath in if you haven't. And exhale, that subtle twist. At least one more. Two or three if it's feeling really helpful, if needed, dropping gently toward the right ear. Maybe your left hand just assists that right shoulder going further. Maybe it actually relaxes once you're there, or of course, any partial bind. Now, when I first started to try that hand at the low back was generally enough. You could go as far as hand at your outer hip, but feeling like it's complementing the release, the stretch in the mid upper back, not because it's what's offered because it's most advanced. 
noticing our egos, checking them when important to do so. Working with this quality of ahimsa, non-injury, non-violence, starting with ourselves. Ease on up and out of it. Take that breath or two. Hmm. A moment to kind of wiggle, sway, do what you need to do. High on fingertips, rooting and rebounding, which includes through the core. It's so easy to overarch in the lumbar. If you haven't already, left arm reaches left. And then on the exhale, you slide it underneath you, that easy twist. Finding the effort and then allowing for the ease. At least a couple more. Maybe you stay put, maybe you keep flowing. And adding more, backing off based on what you're feeling. Sometimes we're not sure until we explore. Being curious is good. Being excessively Stubborn when on the mat, not so good, right? If that starts to happen, noticing, maybe bringing in your sense of humor, and then choosing to move a little differently. Even something real easy intentionally when we're doing something really physically hard, advanced. Do come on back to center, reaching out wide. Both hands come down, you're gonna walk your knees back a few inches or so, several centimeters. Slide your hands, your elbows forward and down. Let your forehead land, maybe sway right to left a couple times first. And then with that mind's eye region relaxed and grounded, keep the elbows planted. Everything's about shoulder width. Feet, ankles, shins might be the reminder to also relax down. Join your palms, another prayer-inspired shape. Thumbs move toward the mid-upper back. You can keep on sliding, elbows a little further forward. Rock the hips a little further up and back. Soft face, soft jaw, maybe flutter it out even here. Or just sigh if that's enough to help you clear stuff that needs to go. Cruising on back eventually to a down dog. Anything you want to weave in or out first, even some wrist rotations, more shoulder love, letting your hips, your bum reach toward the sky, eventually letting your heels descend toward the floor. And then a calf stretching, neck stretching in between, lingering on the side that seems to crave that time, that attention. Toes reaching forward, thighs spiraling back. You've got at least three more breaths. And then moments if you need to deviate from my sequencing, do using your wisdom, your yoga experience, the idea of ahimsa, again, non-injury, non-violence, to continue honoring your body. With that said, let's bring it forward toward a plank or a variation, knees come down. Tailbone reaching back, sternum forward, let's lower roughly halfway, just shy of halfway if that's best. Push it up, inhale plank or modified plank. Take it back, hips can move high, chest low for puppy dog, or stick with down dog. Move it forward, inhaling plank. This exhale or maybe the next, no rush, you're taking it about halfway down. Push it up, inhale, plank. Pull it back, your version of a dog stretch. Two, three more on your own, building strength without making it feel like another job. If you did a hard upper body workout, for example, less might be more. I will happily demo child's pose briefly if for any reason you've forgotten it. That reminder that the child's pose is not your favorite. It doesn't feel restful. Do puppy dog, turtle with knees narrow, something that feels soothing. And after your push-ups do come down to the knees, or if you're already in one of those other offerings, roll it up. Loop the shoulders back to stabilize your scapula, your shoulder blades on your back. Gently pull the heart forward and through. Knees are 
about hip width, ankles, again, about hip bone distance. Breathing in, breathing out, you're gonna walk your right hand back beyond your right foot, maybe a little to the outside. Inhale, float your hips, your heart up. You can look up, forward, or down as you do. Exhale, walk your left hand back beyond your own foot, big inhale. And as you're ready, lowering with the exhale. Now take both arms forward and up. For now, just exhale and loop the arms back and down. Fingertips several inches behind you. Inhale, flip the hips, the heart. Maybe release your head. And exhale, we lower. This time, walk the left hand back, root and rebound, big inhale. Exhale to lower. Walk the right hand back, root and rise, inhale. And exhale to lower. Take both arms forward and up, inhale. And exhale to lower. Rooting to rise, again we inhale. And we exhale to lower. Walk your hands forward. You can take a few basic cat cows as a place to start or stay. You can also join me in stretching out the wrists and forearms a little more, spin fingers toward the knees. Even if it's just from holding your phone, your various devices too much, this one is often really important. Maybe it's one hand, one arm at a time, the other hand in that sort of spider shape. So you can really focus on isolating and integrating breath with movement. Lots of different options, so take what makes sense, not overthinking it. And eventually pull it back, downward facing dog. Get a moment to stretch, yawn. I'm gonna do a couple lion's rollers, scrunching the face, stick out the tongue, clearing any heat, physically or mentally, that needs to go. Big breath in. And then do walk your hands back to your toes. Your head a little shake, yes, no. Slide hands on the shins. Let's inhale, chest out, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, fold it in, Uttanasana. Inhale, expanding, chest forward, traps back. Exhale, releasing, drop the head, lift the shoulders. Let's do one more like that. And then your choice just to stay with the hands on the ankles or shins, pulling yourself gently in. Changing it up with a little body work, massaging the base of the skull where it meets the neck. Or interlacing fingers at your lower back, similar to the traditional bridge work, Padapanas and the C work. If you don't know those shapes, right, we're just opening the chest, the shoulders, countering a lot of the rounding, the inevitable slouching we all do. And wherever you're at, hands can stay or maybe move to the hips. Lift about halfway. Pausing for another breath, continuing to move, root and rise, inhale, stand up. And exhale here. We do rock it out, sway it out. Maybe another lion's roar, horse breath, whatever makes the most sense right now. Ocean sounding, inhale and exhale if it's working for you. It does at times make us warmer, so being discerning with those open mouth exhales when they're important. Take the arms up. Cactus shape, bend the elbows, open your heart. Inhaling, reaching, maybe gazing up. Hinge at the hips, lead with the heart, fold down. Inhale to the half lift, expanding. Complete fold, contracting. Ground down, reach up. And exhale, hands to prayer. Now take the quarter turn if the space you're in allows for it. No big deal if it doesn't, keep facing the way you are. On the inhale, you're reaching up. Cactus shape, broaden the chest, melt the traps. Inhale, reaching, arms can stay wide, they don't have to touch. 
Exhale, dive. Hands frame the feet or ankles. Inhale, chest out. Hinge at the hips, melt in. Root down, reach it up. And exhale, hands to prayer. Quarter turn, inhale, reach the arms. Cactus shaping, exhale, broaden the collarbones. Inhale, keep that space. Exhale, leading with the heart, you fold. Inhale, expanding. Exhale, contracting. Use the legs, the core, the arms follow as you reach. And exhale, palms coming together. One more time, reaching up. Cactus shaping, open up. Inhale, reaching up. Diving forward, take it down. Inhale, chest out. Soften the face, the ribs, fold in. Inhale to take up space. Reintegrating all sides, exhale, hands to prayer. Now you'll take your quarter turn, but once you get there, let your chin melt down to your chest. And just circle your head and neck out. Clearing anything from the day, from any sort of funky sleep, stress that might be there and you're not sure why. Have full rotations, whatever you need, continuing, reversing more than once if that's what's effective. And then finishing up for another breath or two, moving through anything else you need first. Standing tall, reach the arms up. Just swan diving to take it all the way down. Inhaling, chest forward, thighs back. Walking it out, let's find down dog. Fingers bright, push the earth away. Couple yeses, nose. Peeking at the feet, do they need to come a little bit narrower for stability? wider if they're already quite close. Grounding down, reach your right leg up. Bring in what feels good, as simple as kicking the knees, circling the leg. Figure eights are flipping out the dog if you're feeling it. Good, check in with that left arm, left elbow. Is it buckling excessively? Firm it up if so. Now ease back to neutral, no rush. Maybe you come down to the knees for a breath or two. Fingers bright, toes bright. Reach them forward, press the thighs back. Do send the left leg up if you have it. Getting into that ankle, that knee, that hip, what makes sense for you, as big as figure eights, flipping the dog. Maybe it's about backing off, choosing something easier. And then from there, high on tippy toes. And just let both heels descend toward the floor. Two to three on your own. Inhale, high on tippy toes. Exhale, heels toward the earth without jam in the knees. This time, inhale, high on tippy toes. Stay high on tippy toes, bend the knees a lot. Look to hands, step or jump, top of the mat. Inhaling halfway. Exhale, you fold in all of the way. Take it up, maybe gaze up. Reconnecting all sides, push the whole palm or just your finger pads. Feel how with each inhale, the pectoral muscles broaden a little more easily. And with the exhale, sometimes we start to slouch around. So finding that release, that contraction, without giving in to that slouching sensation. Another few breaths just to notice, maybe hands come to the belly, the heart, or to the diaphragm itself, the mid-back region. Observing that wave-like quality, that rise, that fall of prana, life force. If your eyes are closed, sometimes that's very soothing, but often what's needed for where we're headed is eyes open, right? 
Standing on your right foot, just a basic Vrikshasana tree. Pick up the left knee. Reaching for your ankle. Pushing that foot to that inner upper thigh or goes low as the bottom ankle of the calf. You can add any branches with something like Gyan Mudra or Anjali Mudra. Are you still breathing in that wave-like manner? Ujjayi or otherwise, let it flow. And playing with any alternatives, looking up, lifting the heel up. Coming to the wall to back off, make it easier. Breathing through the wobbles when they happen, they're inevitable at least some days. And then maybe top knee comes forward, even the heel can move forward. Last breath or so here. And eventually you'll switch. Any rocks and sways first, coming to your left foot, pick up the right knee. Vrikshasana tree. Noting it can be very different from one side to the other. Opt to start or stay lower. Firming foot to leg, leg to foot. Find that mutual relationship. Adding the branches, the arms, the different mudras, if, when they complement it. Keeping things simple, right? Maybe hands at your hips, your heart, airplane it if that's best. Progressing it, finding that inner dancer or not. Releve, to be clear. And maybe find a little dancer-like movement here, sending the knee, even the heel forward. Rooting down, you can reach it up, big inhale. And we exhale. Be as dramatic as you'd like, a little sip of water if you need it. Come back to mountain, observing. Good time to lick your lips, swallow. Horse breath, lion's roar, maybe one of each. Moving stuff that needs to go up and out. You can lick your lips, swallow. This quality of samavritti, taking in as much as you let out. Hmm. Letting the breath continue to calm and soothe you no matter what you're doing on or off your mat. Eventually take both arms up. Cactus shape, open it out. Inhale, do take the arms up. Leading with your heart, take it forward at the last moment, down. Inhale, chest forward, shoulders trapped, specifically melt back. Walking unless you really want to jump and do springy elbows to eventually get you toward chaturanga. This exhale or the next. Inhaling for cobra or maybe an up dog. Nice long warm up if you're feeling like moving into it. Exhale, down dog, puppy dog, dolphin on the forearms. If you want to change it up, your wrists are in particular asking you to do something different. Hmm. Even just coming back to that kneeling shape, weaving in the various stretches, easy movements that make sense right now. Now eventually high on the balls of the feet or just get yourself to the top of the mat. Stepping, jumping, maybe catch a little air. Inhale, heart forward. Hinge at the hips and fold. Ground down, take up space, reach up. Integrating the front, the back, the right, the left, hands come down. Again, inhale, root and rise, reach up. One more cactus shape, open it out. Inhale, take the arms up. Dive forward, melt down. Inhale, chest forward. Other foot leading, both legs strongly jumping if that's what you're choosing. Taking it halfway, or if preferred, if best, all the way. Cobra, maybe up dog, lingering when it's helpful. Down dog, puppy dog, or any other alternative. And walk your hands back to your toes. Clasp your elbows. And for about a minute, this calming, cooling work. 
stretching a little bit further into those spaces that often need it. But just giving yourself a little more time, a little more space. Hmm. Another breath, two, three, before you drop the arms, ragdoll, waterfall feeling. Bend your knees a lot. And over the next inhale or two, hold it up. Realigning, stacking vertebra by vertebra. Feeling that flow of prana, life force from top to bottom, bottom to top. Eyes open or closed, creating that steady drishti, a gaze that works for you in the present moment. And if you find yourself doing a lot of scrolling, comparing, competing, using that to your advantage more often. One more big breath, or maybe you sigh it out or do an animal inspired sound. <sighs> Letting something go. Now eventually take your arms to the sky. Right hand to your left wrist, just going up and over, side stretching. Going further, backing off. You can always drop the arm, support the head, the neck with the top hand. We'll do take at least a few breaths here, clearing what needs to go a little bit more completely. And again, continuing to calm and soothe, noting when things get a little too intense. Second side, going up and over. Using the heat you've already built, maybe the heat from the space you are in, the season you are living in, to your advantage, going a little further into muscles that often are stubborn, sticky, sore. Eventually coming back to neutral, do reach out for that inhale or two. The base of the pelvis lengthens, lift the hip points, the heart, maybe the gaze and gradually fold yourself down from there. And you'll eventually walk it out, downward facing dog for the next several breaths. Poppy dog, child's pose if you just need to rest and restore sooner than later. Observing the effects of your practice. Noticing where your mind went, can you ground it to your sankopa, your intention? Maybe that's a little more obvious after practicing for a while. 